I am Anil Kumar. This is our practice test on logarithms. Many students who are taking SAT level 2 will definitely get benefited with these set of questions. And they are actually common to most of the competitive exams. So all of you should definitely get something out of it. Now all these questions should be solved without calculator. Uh, these 10 questions will involve change of base formula. We'll begin with very simple questions, question number one and two right there. So you need to evaluate an expression and you have to expand a logarithmic expression, right? So let's first see the questions and then we'll actually solve them one by one. So here are question number three and four. We will try to understand what does that logarithm really mean. And then from question number five onwards, we'll work on change of base formula. So we have actually six questions based on change of base, which you can have a look at. You can always pause the video in between, answer them. Here is question number seven. And uh, then we have question number eight. And then we have our question number 10, right? So, so these are basic 10 questions, which we are going to work on. So let's start with the very first question, answer them. And I hope that really helps you to understand the complete concept of uh, working with logarithmic questions. The very first one is to evaluate log 2 plus log 50 plus log 100. Logarithmic rules will be applied so we can, when we have add, they get multiplied, correct? So actually we can combine these. I'll leave this as such. This is to the base 10, right? So we can say this is log of uh, 2 times 50, right? And plus, see log of 100 is basically, think like this, log of 10 square, right? You could have combined this also with that. So anyway, this is also 100. So we have log of 100 here also. And this is 2, right? Log of 10 square is 2. So log of 100 can be written as 2 plus 2. And you do get answer as 4. So the right option is 4. Well, alternate, you could have just added, multiplied them all. So the alternate method could be log of 2 times 50 times 100, correct? Just multiply them straight. And what you get here is 100 times 100, right? So you get uh, four zeros, correct? Which is log 10 to the power of 4. And that is definitely 4, right? So both are correct methods. You could adopt any one of them. Question number 2. 2 over 3 log to the base A of 8 over 27. Now that could be written as log of basis A. So 2 over 3, that gets into the exponent part, right? So we get 8 over 27 to the power of 2 over 3, correct? So that is how it is. So that should be equal to log A. So when you do 2 over 3, let's do them individually. So we are looking for the cube root of 8. And then we are going to square it. And here we are looking for cube root of 27. And then we are going to square it. So that is equals to log to the base A. Cube root of 8 is 2. 2 squared is 4. And here we get 3 squared which is 9, right? So what we get here is log to the base A of 4 minus log to the base A of 9, correct? So the very first one is the right answer. So I hope that is absolutely clear. Let's take up question number 3, which says log to the base 3 of A equals to K. What is A equals to? So that is to convert that in exponential form, right? So basically you just take 3 there, so we get A equals to 3 to the power of K, correct? So the very part B is the right answer, A equals to 3 to the power of K. Log to the base A of AB square. You write this as log to the base A of A plus log to the base A of B square, right? A of A is 1, so we get 1 plus. Here we get 2 times log to the base A of B, right? So we're looking for 2 times 
so D is the right option correct question number five is change of base formula we have logged the base A of B we need to change the base to C how will that look like well the formula is very clear log to the base A of B is equals to log to the base C you can change it to any base of B divided by log to the base C of A right so that is the formula which matches with our option A so that is the option question number six here is if log to the base A of B is K then what is log to the base B of A right so that is interesting it is derivation from this formula so what we are saying here is log to the base A of B is K right but what we want to know is what is log to the base B of A so we want to change base to B right so when you change base to B you could write this as log to the base B of B divided by log to the base B of A now log base B of B is 1 so we get 1 over log base over K right now so that is what you get right log B. so you get 1 over this perfect now uh, in this particular case you know what is log A of B is equal to so log A of B is K and we have written this basically we have changed the base we know this log this was all equal to log to the base a of b right which is equal to k correct so that could be written as this now what we want here is what is log to the base b of a so if you look into this log to the base b of a is 1 over k right so you could write this as log to the base b of k. a is equal to 1 over k so you basically get the reciprocal and the option C is the correct option. Do you see that reciprocal? So, if you know log to the base A of B, then when you change these bases, you get 1 over K or 1 over log to the base B of A. Is that clear to you? So, this is a very important uh, derivation of the change of base formula, which could be applied in many questions. Here is question number 7. It says, if log to the base 3 of A is K and log to the base 3 of B is 2K, then how is A related with B, right? So what we are saying here is log to the base 3 of A is equal to K, right? Now on the other side, we are saying 2K is equal to log to the base 3 of B, correct? So this K can be written as half of log to the base 3 of b right so we'll substitute this here so when you substitute what do you get you get log to the base 3 of a equals to k which is half of log to the base 3 of b perfect so now because this is half we want what a is that half could be written as we could again go one more step here so it could be written as log to the base 3 of square root of b. Correct? Now since they have the same base, we could write a as square root of b. So we get a as the right option. So that is a very interesting and useful derivation. So I'd like you to go through this once again. As it re really creates confusion many times. Okay. So let's now look into question number 8, which is uh, kind of similar. Uh, so here we have different bases. We are talking about log to the base 3 of A is equal to log to the base 9 of B, right? And we want to know how A and B are related, right? Well, that 9, we can change the base to 3. So I could write this as log to the base 3 of B divided by log to the base 3 of 9, right? Now what is log to the base 3 of 9? This is 3 squared. We could write this as log to the base 3b of, that is 3 square, right? So, well, one more step. So, you could write this as 3 square, then definitely we can write this as log to the base 3 of b divided by 2, right? 2. Now, this is equals to log to the base 3 of a. 
So that is how they are related, but you want to relate A with B. So how could you do it? So you could think like half of this, right? So A will be square root of B. So this 2 here could be written as log to the base 3 of square root of B. Correct? Is that clear to you? Or oh, let me just introduce one more step here. We'll do half times log to the base 3 of B and then take this as an exponent. So you get square root of B. And clearly you get A equals to square root B, right? So option A is the right option. So if you have the base, which is like 3 and 9, then these numbers here will be related as 3 and square root B, correct? Now, last two questions to go. Question number 9. So here we have the same situation, log to the base 9 of x minus 6. I put 9 on this side now. Log to the base 3 of x minus 8. You need to solve this equation and find the value of x. Now at this stage, I'd like you to pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. Okay, so, so we're given here log to the base 9 of x minus 6 equals to log to the base 3 of x minus 8. Let's change this base to 3, right? So we get log to the base 3 of x minus 6 over log to the base 3 of 9, which is 2, right? So we get this as log to the base 3 of x minus 8. Now this is 2, right? So we can write this as half times log to the base of x minus 6 equals to log to the base 3 of x minus 8, right? So I should put brackets here. Okay, so that's what you get. And uh, from here, we now get that x minus 6 to the power of half, that means square root, is equal to x minus 8. Now these are the options given to us. Now at this stage, how are you going to solve it? One method is that you could square both sides. The other thing is, you are looking at it something like this. Square root of a number should be that number, right? So, so if you could see, by placing these numbers, if I write 10 here, if I write 10 here, then what do I get here? I get 10 minus 6, and this is square root, right? So 10 minus 6 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, right? On the right side, you can see that if I substitute 10 here, I get 10 minus 8, which is equals to 2. So both are correct. Is that okay? And in previous examples, you have seen how they are related, square root and, and the number itself. So that should help you to jump at the solution. So the number which fits in to make this as a perfect square, right? If I substitute 10 here, 10 minus 8 is 2 and 2 square is 4, right? So 4 square root will be 2. So that means 10 is the right answer. So at this stage, rather than getting into quadratic equation, right? The alternate method could have been, let me write down here, alternate. A square both sides, right? We get x minus 6 equals to x minus 8 whole square, right? You could square both sides and then solve. And then it takes a bit longer. We get x minus 6 equals to x square minus 16x plus 64, correct? And bringing all the terms together, we get 0 equals to x square minus 16. And that minus means minus 17x. And then you add 60, it gets plus 70, right? And now you can see that 70 could be written as 7 times 10. And you can write this as x and 7 times 10 because um, we want uh, 70 as the product and both negative, right? So x minus 70 times x minus 10, right? So that gives you two possible answers. One is 7 and one is 10. However, when you look at this, you know that x should be greater than 8, right? So from the equation, you know the domain is that x is greater than 8, right? It cannot be negative. It cannot be 0. It has to be more than that. So that is redundant. So the only solution is x equals to 10. Is that clear? So you could solve the quadratic equation as I've done here. However, you can also jump to the conclusion by substituting or 
taking care of these values. So if you try 9, we get 1 here and we get 3 square root, right, which doesn't match. With 10, you get 4 here and 2 there, and square root of 4 is 2. So it works, perfect. So your choice, you could do it straight or continue, square both sides and get your answer. Okay, last question. We have here log to the base 2 of x plus log to the base 4 of x plus log to the base 8 of x plus log 16 um, to 16 equals to 12 find x. Okay, so straight away we should be in a position to first change the base, right? So first step will be, we'll change base to 2, right? So that should be done first. So let's do it. So we have here log to the base 2 of x. Now 4 means plus log to the base 2 of x divided by log to the base 2 of 4 plus that gives us log to the base 2 of 8, oh sorry, x divided by log to the base 2 of 8 plus 16, 16 is 1 only, right? So we get 12 here. So now, uh, what is this? This is equals to log to the base 2 of x. That is 2, right? So we get half of log to the base 2 of x. Uh, plus this is 2 cubed. So we get 1 over 3 of log to the base 2 of x. And we can take this 1 to the other side. We get 11 there. So here we can take log to the base 2 of x common, right? And what we get here? These numbers are 1 plus half plus 1 over 3, correct? Okay. So you can take a common denominator, which is 6. This is 11 on this side. So this is 6, and you get uh, uh, 6 plus 3 plus 2 log to the base 2 of x equals to 11. And now, so you get 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. So we get now from here, log to the base 2 of x equals to 11 times 6 over 11, which is 6, right? So we can get x equals to 2 to the power of 6, right? So we get the solution x equals to 2 to the power of 6, which is 64, right? So we get option B as the right option. Is that clear to you? So likewise, we can solve all these questions. Important thing is to how effectively we can apply this, uh, all the rules learned to solve these questions. I hope you find this interesting and useful. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.